Good e afternoon, everyone. I think uh, people are still straggling in from the cookies and <laughs> tea and coffee. So, welcome. <laughs> we were just talking about talking about you. <laughs> uh, it's good you got some cookies and, and fruit. <laughs> so, um, so what I wanted to do today is um, uh, talk about how Wikipedia, specifically Wikimedia Foundation, uh, uses Agile as part of such a large open source project and uh, share some of the uh, things that work for us, some of the areas that don't work for us, and uh, really have a discussion after that, you know, in terms of how many of you have used Agile or are considering using it and having a discussion around that. So um, let's, let's just get, uh, I just wanted to ask how many of you are actually familiar with Scrum? Cool. So uh, obviously you're looking at Agile or using it. Um, and uh, just, to, just to be you know, very concise, Agile basically means to me as a software engineer and engineering manager, nimbleness, right? How nimble can we be? And how can we make sure we can build software faster, better, quicker, all the great things that we want to achieve with uh, as little time as possible, right? So um, uh, all of you know about Wikipedia. You use it all the time, I'm sure. Read it, edit it, uh, look, at, look at different things uh, on Wikipedia and other, other sister projects. But Wikimedia Foundation, which is the foundation that supports all the infrastructure for Wikipedia and all the sister projects, has a large number of engineers. And uh, of course, it's less than 100, so that's, you know, for being a top five website, less than 100 engineers is actually very small. And out of that uh, large percentage, almost 25 are ops. So when you come down to the scale of the number of engineers actually involved in engineering for Wikimedia different websites, it's about 75 to 80 engineers. So what are we looking at, right? We are a massively large open source project. And at the same time, we are a huge open knowledge content community. And it's very interesting because it's, it's one of the most unique projects on the web, uh, as well as in the open source world, where you have the open source project, MediaWiki, running in, along with a very large open knowledge, open knowledge community, right? So each of them influences each other. That is, each community of open content, open knowledge influences open source and vice versa. And, and the ideals of open source are very, very, very strong free software in our, in our movement. So how does that work in engineering? Because not only are we an open source project, but we are also a large top website, right? And at the end of the day, Many times, the values and ideals of collaboration, of distributed development teams, uh, of volunteer contributions are actually contradictory to being able to run a top website, a top five property on the web with the kind of uh, SLAs and the availability requirements and the feature requirements that such large websites have for different communities. So engineering has to constantly look and balance those two uh, big, large elephants in the room, right? Because on one hand, we are a large, large, large open source project. And on the other hand, we have to maintain the requirements of managing and delivering content on a top five website, delivering production quality software, delivering it on time, delivering it in terms of a fast uh, paced organization that is trying to build and maintain a website which is used by literally billions of people and at the same time also build production quality software. It's a very interesting combination. And then in order to look at innovation, in order to look at fast growth and how we accommodate that, in order to deliver production quality software and also maintain being a top five website and an open source project, we started looking at Agile. So 
what's agile, right? In the world of um, software development and software engineering, it's, it's kind of a very huge term. Everybody talks about agile, and, but it means different things to different teams and to different people. So I'd like to talk about what it means to us. When we started looking at Agile a couple of years ago, as an organization, we were like, OK, so we really, really want to see innovation. And we want to see fast-paced contributions coming back into our code base so that we can drive the feature set and improve the feature set off the websites. And at the same time, maintain our open source uniqueness. Because we are, at the end of the day, a free software open source project. We are. We care about it. We believe it. And our entire stack of technology that is on our websites is open source. So how do we maintain those cultures and at the same time practice and deliver high quality software in very short periods of time? So what, what, what is it that makes this uniqueness happen? In our case especially, every team is distributed other than a couple of core functions such as fundraising software which is actually used when you know Wikipedia puts out a call for donations that is local to San Francisco but other than that every team in Wikimedia's engineering group is completely distributed which means that there are engineers who are local within the Bay Area and also distributed worldwide Online communication. So if you have distributed teams, which is an inherent quality that every open source project has, you have to have very strong online communications. That means that you're, doing, you're talking with each other all the time on IRC, on uh, Hangouts, on uh, email, on mailing lists, everything, right? And, and, and literally, open source projects live and breathe and talk about software, think about software, write software online. So it is something, that's, something that doesn't necessarily work in the traditional definition of Agile. Spanning many time zones and cultures. When you're talking about distributed teams and open source projects, it's not necessarily guaranteed that you are going to have distributed teams that necessarily need to coordinate with each other to build production quality software to push onto a website. You don't. don't. Open source projects rarely think that way. So spanning many time zones, cultures, accommodating different you know, developers who are actually presenting and talking about that in, in an online environment is a challenge. And, and that's something which is very unique. Also. Another big area which is characteristic of open source is that why do you write open source software? Just to address a need that you have yourself. And small ideas, small features, small instances of needs that you have, you're taking and making them big features. And that's something which is also very unique to open source, but we do that also for our website. Serving our community. That's another open source ideal. We care about what we are doing for our community. We wouldn't be able to do Wikipedia and support it if we were not actually serving our community. And as engineering, we do that with all the contributed code that is coming in, doing code reviews, doing bug fixes, and incorporating that into our sprints, which are part of our agile um, the sp sprint planning that we do for our teams. We allow, we again, in the spirit of being open source, allow anybody and everybody to be able to report bugs and to be able to triage with us, with the core engineering teams, even if you're a volunteer community member, uh, being able to contribute bugs and add, report bugs as well as triage them. What are the tools we use? Open source. Get most of you have used it, I'm sure. Garrett, Bugzilla, Bingo, very interesting script. In fact, you should check it out. <laughs> GitHub, uh, almost open source, but you know, almost very much used in the open source community. And then Scrum tools, um, such as Mingle, Trello, and Asana, which are actually not open source, but we use them in, because of the functionality that we are actually using in Agile. Um, 
so it kind of gives you an, you know, completely different dimension to the definition of the word agile and how agile development is actually used by an open source project. So having said that, you know, we are coming with this huge paradigm that we want to reinforce, protect, and promote open source. Care about it, we are going to have it in every piece of software that we build. So how does Agile actually fit into that mode of thinking? How does it fit into your team? Because this is not a traditional software team that we are talking about where we you know, have a bunch of engineers sitting in, in a nine to five job, not that there are any jobs of that sort that exist in IT or in software development for that matter, but, but having everybody 24 by seven actually looking at the code, working in a live uh, open source uh, way, and at the same time committing to deliverables and planning and and commitment of refining those processes that you know, we are testing and putting onto a production top five website. It's a challenge. So even the remote people who are contributing to the, uh, the foundation, uh, are they also part of the production? Yes, yes. And, and so uh, you know, that goes back to the, uh, what I mentioned as being distributed teams that are actually participating in Agile, right? And, and really, t these areas are key to us. So we have seen the defining roles and responsibilities for team members, having Agile coaching for folks who are actually engineers, who are on the engineering teams, the commitment of the team to understand, appreciate, and use Agile well, and just enough to be able to do the features right and true and rigorous process, but not really making that whole process very heavy. Continuously refining that process on saying, okay, this works for us, this really doesn't work for us, let's drop the stuff that doesn't work for us. And making sure that the people on the team, that is our engineers, process, and the purpose of why we do Agile and why we build good features and why we do open source actually intersect. Very key, because you have to keep that in mind in order to make this even make sense in our environment. So I want to talk a little bit about roles and responsibilities and how that plays out in the, our teams, our software development teams, and at the large scale that we are working on. We support, for example, the language engineering team, which does all the internationalization and localization. Um, ha supports 286 languages, which are live and have active communities in our world. So they, we have a massive scope. So what do, we, what, what do we see as roles and responsibilities? We have an engineering manager. In this case, that's, that's me. Uh, product owner, so person who is actually saying uh, what we are going to be building, right? Scrum master, which is the person who, uh, or the role, if you will, because we try not to equate the roles to people as such. The role is what that responsibility requires, not necessarily tagged on to a person. In fact, the more people who understand and each of the roles, the better it is, because it really helps the team also understand the complexities of the different roles if they're interested in. So Scrum Master is the person who is actually saying, okay, how do we do this? Talking with the developers and making sure that the entire team actually participates and provides uh, estimates and details about the code that we are building, right? The user interaction designers, which means that you know, we are a website at the end of the day. We have to actually build user-friendly features that work for our users. We have to. It's very unique about an open source project. Usually open source projects don't care about that, but we do. Um, a tech lead, so depending on the feature that we are building, taking the uh, leadership role, first engineer to actually lead the, and, and provide direction on the tech, technical side. And um, of course, software engineers, core part of the team. We couldn't do anything about, without them, or neither do we want to. Um, test engineers, QA. Um, that's an important role because, you know, again, 
this is very unique about an open source project, you know, because again, open source has never fundamentally cared about user interaction design or about QA. You throw this stuff over the fence, people will figure out whether it works or not, they'll report bugs if they want to, and then we'll fix it if we get to it, now, right? Now, now, what open source projects <laughs> look like they were designed by open source owners? Exactly. So, you know, but the point is that we are a website at the end of the day, right? And we are a website that's used by billions of people. We can't afford to do this. So, it's very cool because, you know, you actually see that in this kind of a live environment where all the software is being used by billions of people, we need to have user interaction design, as well as usability testing, as well as QA, because we can't actually build good features which are production quality without that. And the last but not least, which is very important for us and very important as an open source project, is community outreach. We actually deeply, deeply care about getting feedback from our users, because at the end of the, at the, end of the day, our users are our community. We are an open source project. And it doesn't matter if there are a billion users or a trillion users, we still want to hear and incorporate the feedback, whether that is coming in through the needs that they have for a particular feature, or if they have a specific issue that they're having which we need to fix. So we need to hear about that and incorporate that in a very short life cycle, maintaining the pace of an open source project and at the same time listening to our users. So communications is very, very important for us. And, and also at the same time making sure that our users and understand what the features actually do. If there are nuances in it, uh, there are particular modes that a feature can be used in, especially in the compl complex world of languages, right? Because you're doing multilingual software at that point. So these are the specific roles that come into play for you know, the different Agile teams that we have. So what works for us? We tried, you know, we started doing Agile a couple of years ago, and um, we looked at the weekly, the, the, the size of the sprint, for example. What is the time box that we want to follow in terms of what works well for an engineering team? We looked at one week, we looked at three weeks, we settled on two weeks. And the reason for that is the one week is too short. We are running production quality, production grade, you know, websites. At the end of the day, we really, really have to, even if we would probably prefer not to sometimes, but we have to actually do due diligence in terms of doing reasonable amount of QA. <coughs> And, and being able to deliver a feature in a timely way, but one week is too short. Just can't do the focused development feature effort and at the same time you know, do all the pieces required to deliver good quality software in a one week period. So two weeks works for us. We do deploy every week on a weekly basis. That means that we push to production every week, but we do two-week sprints, and that means that we are basically timeboxing the features that we are building or the you know, bugs that we are fixing, and we are allocating the time accordingly in that period and making sure that we are making good progress. The second thing that, that really works well for us is timeboxing meetings. We are absolutely religious about cutting off a meeting at the time required, even if we don't finish all the items on our agendas and discuss you know, what we need to. Because again, it, you can go into eternal bike sheds on anything that you want to, and open source projects are famous for this, right? So at the end of the day, you really, really cannot do any kind of you know, agile and keep up with uh, the pace that we want to maintain in terms of building software without time boxing. Yes. So you said each week there will be a deployment to production? Yes. And your sprints are two weeks? Yeah. Uh, how do you, I don't get it, like the, in theory, the end result of a sprint is a deliverable. So working deliverable. Not necessarily, no. You want to address uh, that, Amir? Yeah, so I Amir works I, on my team. I work on the team. Um, the, the, the weekly deployments are of all the 
other software that is developed by the foundation, uh, all the needed deployments are decided, what are we going to deploy from all the different teams, and they are deployed every week. Uh, the, this two-week sprint is for a, for a particular team. Other teams do two-week sprints too, uh, but, and they don't necessarily deliver everything. They don't necessarily, we don't necessarily deploy everything. So we have an it's we a have an process. yeah so we have an overall continuous integration process okay. right and for our entire software stack we actually push a fresh release every week. Yes yes that's correct and 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 at the same time the features teams right that is applications that is for example we are doing language features or we're doing mobile features or we're doing you know. Um, editor uh, engagement features. <coughs> those the, those teams are pushing on a different time timeline, right? So we're using two week sprints, and we maintain windows on a weekly basis for deployment because in case we have bug fixes, right? We could have bug fixes for application features which are which are critical. We need to fix them, so we push them on a weekly basis if we need to. We keep those slices because we need to actually have that available as a flexible uh, time period. Sorry. So time boxing meetings was the second thing we talked about. Then thirdly, maintaining focus. It's very important that if you are actually planning sprints and you're actually asking for such a distributed structure of, of engineers to contribute you know, and make sure the features are completed in a, in a fixed time box period, really maintaining features, selecting only the top priority you know, features that require and can be built, right? So we maintain a product backlog, obviously, and we prioritize based on that. It's very interesting because this is contradictory to the way open source would work because you'd really, you know, and, and as a, at an individual level, an open source developer would pick what they like to pay or do. They would like to work on a particular area that they were working on or thinking about, and they, that's what they would like to do. But here we are. We are intersecting with a huge set of websites, right? So we have to, at the end of the day, say, OK, these are the features we are going to pick, and these are the, these are the you know, functionality. This is the functionality we are going to build, and that's what we are going to focus in in the sprint. The fourth thing, as I talked about earlier, is team communications. You have to absolutely communicate very closely and tightly as a team. Teamwork is absolutely essential to making this work because we are distributed. Every team is distributed. We have to talk. We have to be able to have developers being able to talk to each other easily, anytime, all the time. And the five, fifth thing, which is actually very cool, and every all of us really care and enjoy this, is actually adding fun time for pet projects on our sprints. Because it's not, it's not supposed to be. I mean, this is, we're just time boxing because we're organizing our time, right? But that doesn't mean that we are, we are just doing this in a very mechanical way. It is really that we want to be able to invest in all the cool ideas that we want to do as an open source project. And taking that time and allocating 20% of our sprints to actually working on ideas that we want to try out or features that we want to look at, experimental, or uh, helping and working with the community. We all come from the open source community. We are part of it. Supporting the community, working across projects, collaborating with other projects, working on co projects which are you know, cross-functional or cross-projects -proje uh, uh, is, is something we like to do. So adding Fun time is very key. We, we, we wouldn't be able to do Agile at all if we didn't do that. So what doesn't work? That list is longer. So um, some of the things that uh, you know, we could do better, obviously, is you know about user stories, right? New term, but still a very old concept. <laughs> and, and basically, that means product requirements. So, at the end of the day, we say, OK, this is, these are the features we want to roll out for our users. And that's in a product backlog. What is termed in Agile is a product backlog. And it's a list of all the requirements that product would love to have. 
they come from different sources. They might come from the foundation itself in terms of some strategic priorities where we want to improve the software and improve the feature set that Wikipedia has. Or it could come from the users themselves. Or it could even come from strategic goals where we want to get to, like mobile, supporting mobile and different kinds of mobile platforms and browsers in the long run. So user stories are very key, right? So what doesn't work for us is that we still are not doing enough in terms of having enough detail for specific user stories. So we kind of know because, you know, think about this. Again, we're an open source project. We care about the feature. We'd rather code than actually define the requirements for what could all the use cases be for a particular feature. We'd rather go and code it. So user stories do not have adequate detail, and that kind of affects the process. Insufficient acceptance criteria. Again, this is a weakness that we're inherently bringing as an open source project because we're, this is product. This is coming from our needs for supporting production websites. Acceptance criteria. What are the exact feature sets and the details that product will accept at the end of the day and designates the feature to be complete? Right? So I have a quick question on that. Yeah. So your requirement basically comes from the user, right? It's open source project, so. No, it doesn't. So do you have a concept of product owner? Yes, absolutely. We have a product, we have a product team. Yes, and that needs to be tuned. Because again, remember that even if we have a product team, it's not an enterprise product team. It is an open source product team. Very different to animals altogether. They might be labeled the same way, but they're completely yeah, different. Like yeah. Okay? So it's not, it's not you know, out of the box software. Um, we have, we have uh, four uh, engineers, actually f uh, five engineers, but three full-time engineers, okay? And we have one product owner, one communications testing, so about seven, you would say. Seven folks. Yes. Yeah. Um, I might not be able to attend all the meetings. I might not be able to. Did you have any challenges like that? Yeah, absolutely. We have it all the time. But, but what we do is that we always, 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 as an open source project, allow everybody and anybody to contribute code patches, right? Perfect. So here, here again, I, I can edit it. Um, so occasionally it happens that uh, somebody out of the, the room comes and says, yeah, so the, what, the kind of thing that you do in the uh, language, different language support uh, technologies. I'd like to try to contribute there. So uh, let's say that I uh, have a task for me estimated uh, as a developer to solve a particular bug. It's estimated for four hours. So uh, occasionally I would say um, I'll use these four hours instead of coding. If I think that that uh, programmer can actually solve the bug, I will mentor that programmer. I'll use my time to mentor that programmer to solve the bug, and it's actually quite often successful because I like I use my time anyway uh, this new person may become a new contributor uh, and everybody's happy so that's one possibility another possibility is that we do particular things uh, in, in general we do particular things that we decide that are important and high priority and whatever the volunteers want to contribute they can they often want to yeah. contribute other things mm -hmm. that are lower priority yep. for us yeah but the high priority personally for them yeah and they contribute, and we are very happy about that. Yep, and what we do is, as we had mentioned earlier, we will code review. And we will make sure that, you know, once it's code reviewed, and it is a, if it is a feature that we can integrate in, we will push it into production. And so, as I already mentioned, we have time set for that every, yep. every spring. And we do that very, very, you know, honestly and dedicatedly, because we care that, you know, at the end of the day, our open source contributors you know, have to be supported, okay? So that's something that, you know, is inherently built into how we think. And our engineers and everybody on the team is actually amazingly committed to that. Um, 
negotiating across teams for, project, uh, for resources is sometimes an issue for us. Because, you know, being such a large, large, large open source project and at the same time websites, uh, we have a lot of negotiation that we need to do sometimes for ops resources, for example, or for code review resources, for example, say, you know, we are looking at a security patch or, you know, or a larger uh, uh, website-wide issue. We do need to have support for that, so negotiation is actually a blocker for us sometimes. And also, uh, engineering does Agile today, but product and user and, and design doesn't. So again, if you look at it um, from a perspective of understanding and intersecting with those needs, we would like to see product and design also run on the same, or at least understand what and where to intersect in that pace. Yes. Where do your user stories come from? Do you generate the user stories product? Product does. Product does, and then we walk through as an engineering team with product the details, and we request more detail so if we need to. Back time yes, we do, uh, but we are not good at it. We actually <laughs> are. We we have a product backlog, but we don't <laughs> refine it as much as we should. Okay, and we are working on that, but we, you know, again, it's, it's amazing that we do Agile. So, <laughs> um, what doesn't work? More things. Um, there, not having enough product backlog grooming sessions. That is, how do we prune and make sure our product backlog is up to date? And that's something that we, are, we actually do need to uh, very much improve and tune to be uh, Agile too. Uh, again, Coding. Coding is everything, right? So we love doing new features. We love doing new development. We love doing, you know, writing new stuff because that's what open source is all about. But we need to do QA. We need to do bug fixing. We need to do documentation. We need to clean up our code, you know, when we are pushing it to production and actually making it maintainable over time. So we need to prioritize those at the same you know, per amount that is maybe doing QA sprints, maybe doing bug fix sprints, maybe doing documentation sprints, you know, but actually doing the maintenance that it needs to make sure that the code is production ready. Unheard of concept in open source, but we do need to do this in order to actually maintain our developer contributorship and actually have that in an ideal world, right? So, again, these are areas that we are tuning, right? We see these problems. We see these and run into them every day. Time management, another huge area. Again, it's contradictory to open source. It's like ask a developer, you are, how, when are you going to deliver that piece of code for me? I don't know. I could care less about it. You know, I'll do it when I get to it. So time management in terms of, okay, saying, okay, this is the amount of time it's going for me to deliver this feature and it's going to be ready needs work. And, and that's something that, again, we work and we hope that we keep getting better at it. Yeah, It is. So, I mean, what we do is we re leave it relatively open for contributors to, you know, add code at any point in time. But our product backlogs are all transparently public. Everything is public, right? So at the end of the day, as an individual developer or a you know, group of developers who are working on a particular feature, and you are contributing that feature, it's fine. Uh, you can go and look at our backlog, right? You can go and look at our Scrum board. You can go and look at our you know, current sprint tasks, what we are working on. So, you can actually say, okay, I'm going to intersect with this at this point in time. I would like to have this feature and potentially can actually make sure that our teams, the engineering core teams, can support code review and deployment and integration into production. Okay? So that's something that's pretty interesting. So I, I talked about what works, what doesn't work, what's agile, what's open source, you know, and how we actually try to do some magic to make it work. 
next step. So what would we like to see, which we, would, we really think might bring us more, more and more value or understanding and more knowledge so that we can do Scrum better, is that at this point in time, we have multiple teams who are implementing and using Agile as a development process. Cross-team sharing, discussing the problems that we are running across, because different teams actually have different blockers. They have different issues that they face. Uh, sometimes, you know, there are, some team has a different issue they're running into as a team, you know, trying to do Agile versus us ourselves, etc. So having a knowledge sharing as a user group is a good thing. And having that cross-conversation is a good thing. Now, it's amazing, right? We are an open source project. We're online and we talk with each other all the time. We're on mailing lists all our life, right? But on the other hand, it becomes so difficult for us to communicate on these kind of issues. Scrum, what the hell, why would we talk about it, right? So uh, Scrum Masters hanging out once a month at least and, and connecting and talking with each other. Coaching other teams, so cross, you know, like if, if some things work for you, getting the Scrum Master of one team to actually work with another uh, team and tune the process, uh, dropping stuff that we don't need. It's very critical. We do not want to have a heavy process. We don't. We are absolutely anti-heavy process. We just need to do just enough. And documenting. Documenting best practices, sharing them, making them publicly available, successes, failures, what works for us, doesn't work for us, so that other teams outside on other projects, as well as within the uh, Wikimedia world can look at it, share, talk about it, whatever. Um, Agile for common resources, product design, QA. We'd like everybody to actually be able to understand it. Don't have to appreciate it, but actually at least understand what, the, what that process is and how everybody is trying to do the part that they're playing. Building management support. We have engineering managers who could care less about Agile. They don't want to do it. They just don't care about it. And, but we have to, right? At the end of the day, we are on a continuous integration cycle. We actually do support a top website you know, on, the, on the web. And we have to have that support and that inherent understanding that we can't scale. We cannot scale our teams. We cannot scale our software. We cannot scale the number of users we are supporting if we don't have that overall buy-in. And facilitating the teams to be on the same sheet of music. That is, people are at, their, everybody's peers in this process. So everybody has to be at least understanding of each other, being on the same sheet of agile music. We thought that was funny. So, <laughs> so you know, but, but we try, you know, and, and these are the things we've run across. So it's good to share that because it's a very unique example of, you know, how this uh, two diametrically opposite environments are actually trying to work here together. Um, and that's all I have. I, I really would like this to be a, you know, foundation for discussion. And uh, again, would like to ask you questions as you've implemented Agile. Uh, what do you see as some of the issues that you're facing and what works for you? Wow. <laughs> Amir is from Israel. So <laughs> and Runa, who's also on the team, is from India. And it's Cheza, and you know. So, yeah. but, but, but anyway, the, the splitting the time across too many different, yes. different distractions uh, is one thing we're dealing with. Uh, I had a question for you. Do you do a 
retrospective? Yes. Okay. And, and we do. We actually do do a sprint planning meeting. We do a retrospective every two weeks. And we do have a sprint uh, setup meeting. So we do spend a significant amount of time in each sprint, at least six hours, you know, time boxed very tightly in terms of actually making sure the whole team participates in the planning. So each team, are they broken up? Um, are they relatively close to each other? Do these teams that way? So do you have a scrum of scrums? Um, we don't have a scrum of scrums. And the reason for that is that, you know, each development team today has uh, different focuses, right? So the uh, timelines and the feature sets that they are working with or working to develop are relatively independent where it doesn't need to intersect as a scrum of scrums. Okay. And do the, all those, each of those teams co-located or are they, are they also distributed? No one is co-located. No. Yes, <laughs> and which is which is amazing. It's actually, it's actually, um, you know. So when you speak to ThoughtWorks, for example, which is you know the king of agile, if you will, um, they they would they always, as the baseline, say, "Hey, everybody's got to be co-located. It would be perfect to have everybody around the table in the same room." We are like, no, 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 we don't do this. We don't have any co-location as an assumption at all. We are assuming that we are going to span across, you know, five time zones and, and five continents and make sure that this is actually going to work. So that is quite challenging. I'm sure you do. I mean, would you like to give us some detail about what? Wow. Wow. But you're still on the same continent, almost, other than Ireland. <laughs> no? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Yes, there are cultural differences, and um, we try to, you know, support uh, different uh, expectations and different needs on the team. It's difficult, right? Because at the end of the day, um, given that you know, even our, my team itself spans uh, four time zones, five, six time zones. So. Um, we, and, and that means at least four different cultures, right? And, and uh, because we have, you know, we're spanning all the way from Asia into San Francisco, right? So <laughs> almost the Pacific Ocean is probably the only thing left for us. So, uh, <laughs> so at, at that point, we are really, you know, having to accommodate different people's needs on the team. And that's culturally, you know, it's like, are people available? Do they have families to support? Do, are they, do they need to go and do stuff with their friends? You know, and what time are they available? How does that work? You know, how do we actually accommodate all those uh, support the team and at the same time, you know, do uh, scrum meetings or stand-ups? And, and so it does become an issue sometimes, but we are pretty, we, we go with the flow, right? Because the idea is not to crack down and say, okay, this is a process we, we are just going to live and die by it. That's not the point of a process. The process actually should be what works for the team. And if there, are, we, we try to do daily stand-ups every day today, but if I, if I see that daily stand-ups, you know, don't make sense uh, for the team to be doing Monday through Friday, maybe it's better to do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Again, it's, you know, you have to actually tune the process as you go. I mean, it all makes sense, but especially when you have full-time employees working with you in that stream, especially when you have community members coming in voluntarily, adding more code, that's when it becomes tricky. So, you know, what that, how we do that is we have office hours, for example, on IRC. 
everything is on IRC, okay? We have bug triaging sessions on IRC. We have, um, you know, we have um, stand-ups which are announced and, and public. So if, if, if there is a particular contributor who is working on a particular piece of code that we are looking at, code reviewing or integrating or whatever, we will invite them to a particular time that works for them and for the team to be available because we have, you know, they can join in. Join our Hangout. Discuss the feature. We, we also do face-to-face um, -face hackathons worldwide. So we do, we do developer, you know, face-to-faces uh, once at least every quarter. And we try to do that worldwide because we do want to intersect with our volunteer contributors. And we want them to actually meet with the core team and know the people whom they're interacting with. Because at the end of the day, everybody spends their life online on an open source project. But you also need to have face-to-face -face, uh, communications, sorry, <laughs> where, where it helps the project at large. So I hope I answered some questions. Please, I know we are out of time. <laughs> no, no. Should we? Can we do one more question? Okay. Nobody's rushing in yet, so. I am a technical writer who works in Scrum Agile environment, and I, I am a shared resource, much like a PM, or yes. much like a Scrum Master. Yes. And I go to all of the Scrum meetings so that I understand what's going on for three or four products. Oh my gosh. And, yeah. <laughs> Unless there's you know, something on fire, but that's the default. No, we do. We do. I mean, because, you know, we do have, uh, we don't have de dedicated tech writers. Yes, that is correct. But we do have volunteer contributors as well as different team members, product and communications and documentation, and, and different engineers even take turns at supporting that. There is no tech writer. Yeah in an open source project. <laughs> it's, it's a wiki. We are Wikipedia. <laughs> it could be, though. <laughs> but thank you again for your time. <laughs> and thanks for listening. It was a good discussion.